What happened to Representative Beth Fukumoto was appalling. I look at what they did as killing the Republican Party in Hawaii. I mean, there's people that I think sometimes don't think Hawaii is still a state. We are the last state to have come in to the nation, and we are the most diverse. The trend line does not look good for Republicans nationally. Uh, they're not diversifying in terms of picking up minority votes. Whites, at some point, will no longer be a majority. But that has already happened in Hawaii. There are 76 members of the state legislature. Only six of them are Republicans. Six months ago, eight of them were Republicans. That number is shrinking. If Beth leaves, it's down to five. I joined the Republican Party because I had a bunch of friends joining, and they were all really into this idea that we could change the party, and that was the vision. Can we make a strong two-party system with a Republican Party that can represent us? My voice was sort of special in the Republican Party because there weren't a lot of minority women. Granted, there's not a lot of minority women, even in the Democratic Party, but there's a few more, so... Um, yeah. It is so rare to not only unseat someone, but particularly to unseat a sitting Democrat. And for Beth to have done that was almost unheard of. Beth Fukumoto was a minority leader in the House, and she was denounced loudly. My name is Bob McDermott, MCD, capital, well, capital D, MC, capital D, E R M O T T, from Eva Beach, Hawaii. When you're one of six Republicans, you have a responsibility to be the loyal opposition. That's kind of my job here. Beth, she's a, like a resume builder. I'm fighting. She actually spoke against me. Last year, we had a legislator, one of my fellow legislators, uh, swore at me on the floor. Start acting like an effing Republican. That's what I told her. This legislator came out from his seat all the way around to the front of the table and leaned over at me and said, be an, like, be an effing Republican. <laughs> Say, members, you are interrupting the speech, please. She's directionless. I mean, she has some personal problems, too. I mean, she going through, just went through a divorce. Uh, kind of directionless, and I like her, but I don't like her behavior of late. So it is what it is. Like my kids, I'll scold them if they get out of line. She is identified as the Republican leader, the leader of the Republican Party in the state of Hawaii for all intents and purposes, and goes out and takes a big old dump on the president. We had our state convention, and there had been a couple of different stories in the paper about me raising concerns about Trump. There was already a lot of anger towards me, but nobody can prepare you for being booed for 10 minutes straight. We grew the party 50%. Yes, you did. Yeah, off of this man. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So yeah. why would anybody come against it? Yeah. When, I, when I opened up the questions, I, I knew that was going to be the question. Ultimately, am I going to go to stand behind our presidential nominee? And you can all boo me. The answer is I don't know. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that will be Last summer, when I stood up at my party's convention, the ballroom full of men and women tossed insults and booed me because instead of pledging to support my party's nominee, I said I thought his remarks were racist and sexist and they had no place in the record. These people bully the whales. Yay! Oh, these aren't these comments aren't self-serving at all, are they? <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, I mean, it's all for self-gain. This is all she's got. Trump is not a racist. That is bullshit. You can't be successful like that and be a racist. I mean, there's just no way. I would be called a racist if based on my views. Except look at my wife, right? I mean, I'm a big white guy. Should I, is, do I have to apologize for that? That didn't ask to be born that way. It is what it is, and in Hawaii, it's not necessarily an advantage, I gotta tell you. Her whole claim to fame is trashing Trump. Well, you know, 
Go ahead, you want to trash them, go ahead all day. Join the Democratic Party, but you can't do it as leader of the Republican Party. The two older men in our Republican caucus um, can't handle a strong woman. And they took away the face of moderate Republicanism. They told me they would keep me in this position if I would commit to not disagreeing with our president for the remainder of his term. Uh, I actually was in tears when that happened. If you come to my office, I can give you 10 quotes saying Republicans are racist and sexist over and over and over again. And that's what was at the Women's March. And I looked at the rising star sitting on my right, the wonderful woman that is such a leader, such an important voice for Hawaii and even for our nation. And I looked at what they did to her and I just was appalled. Any discussion? Yes. Representative Thielen. I'm rising in opposition. Please proceed in opposition. Thank you. The minority leader is being punished for participating in the Women's March. I think that is absolutely disgraceful and appalling. Cynthia, that she stood by me till the very, very end, um, meant so much to me. I believe the majority leader does well, this, this once a year. Point, point of order. In two thousand. Okay, this, this, Representative this, McDermott. This has nothing to do with the women's march. This is a motion on leadership. It has nothing. To, I don't see women's march anywhere in here, and I don't want to waste my time listening to this. Okay, I, I'm going to allow that Thank because you. it really. She, Rep. Thielen relates her speech to the merits of the resolution. Thank you. So I'll allow it. And, I, and I appreciate his comments. It's all about the Women's March. It's all about Representative Fukumoto standing up for women and human rights. I had thought our party could grow because of Beth, and now our party is dead. God, I am sorry to lose our minority leader, someone I so deeply, deeply respect the face of republicanism as it should be but it won't be anymore the republican party has gotten so far away from what i thought it could be that i don't have a lot of hope that it's going to come back in the near future in the meantime my job as a state representative is to take care of problems right now and i think i can best do that with democrats So that you guys all know in the following weeks, I'm going to announce that I'm leaving the Republican Party and pursuing membership as a Democrat. But that doesn't mean that I automatically can sign a party card. I have to go through a committee where they have to approve whether or not they want to accept me. And right now we're not sure I have the votes. I first became aware of her um, back during the civil unions debate, and she was on the other side of where I was at personally. I have a, a gay family member, and so I believe very deeply in marriage equality. Uh, changing political parties is not like you know, changing a jacket just because the weather on the other side of the street is better. Votes matter, convictions matter, it's not to say we're not a welcoming party and we won't give her a shot to be a Democrat, but you know we are defined by our values and we really want to make sure that we're upholding what our members have come together for generations to say what we're all about. So I wanted to ask you about what seems to me like the one issue that might cause a problem for you okay. being a Democrat, <laughs> okay. um, which is same-sex marriage. Yeah the history of the issue of same-sex marriage in Hawaii is that in the 90s, people thought they put it to a public vote. When I went to my constituents to talk about the issue, so many people said, we already voted on this. How can the legislature be overturning what we voted on? I felt like I had a responsibility to my district to vote the way people were telling me to vote. If it was a public vote and I was alone in the ballot booth, 
Of course, of course, for me, the answer was yes. But my personal feeling was that my responsibility was to the people that elected me because they thought they had already voted on it. This process is broken and the measure is flawed because of it. So for these reasons, Mr. Speaker, I'm voting no. All right, thank you so much. I don't think I saw until this election how dangerous it is to slowly give in to, I guess populism is the way to, is the way to describe that. I, I don't think I realized the danger that we were actually facing. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't try harder. I wish it could have been different. <laughs> Done that messed around, I'm having fun, don't put me down, never let you sweep me off my feet. We are still writing the script for the announcement video. The weight of all of it is starting to hit me. This is a moment in American politics where people should think more about what they're saying. I'm just hit with the with the weight and the responsibility. Hopefully people like it. <laughs> Time, baby, I'll be bulletproof. Today, I'm leaving the Republican Party and pursuing membership in the Democratic Party. She's always trying to do the best that she can do in what she's doing. All these other things happen. But she says she takes care of her people. That's the key. That's why you run for office. You know, that's why they vote you in. <laughs> I voted for Trump. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes.